<laughs> Why does he have a satellite coming out of his butt? I always ask you guys, what TV show or movie do you want me to review next? And recently, I've been getting an overwhelming number of comments wanting me to check out the medical scenes and injuries on South Park. If you're unfamiliar with what South Park is, according to the South Park's website, every episode of this award-winning show is packed with unforgettable adventures, cutting satire, and hilarious absurdity from pissed off celebrities to talking towels and crime fighting kids. We'll see what it's all about. But before we get into it, my name is Dr. Jordan Wagner. I'm an ER doctor that deals with every medical situation that you can think of. Gunshot wounds, COVID, broken hips, firework mishaps. I created this channel to answer the medical questions that I get from people each and every day. If you find this video helpful, please smack the subscribe button and turn your bell notifications on. That way you learn when I post a new video. All right, ready to watch some funny medical clips? Let's react to South Park. Oh, doctor. Doctor, one moment, please. Nurse, I need 20 cc's of sodium pentothal. What? Wait a second. What the heck's happening? Sodium pentothal, which is a type of sedative. The nurse picks it up with her mouth, which is not sterile, and the nurse has no arms. Okay, the doctor's got a surgical mask on, but obviously the nose is exposed, so that's not helping. I'll be right with you right after I inject this man with a long needle. <laughs> I always get the length of the needle scares people. The length of the needle has nothing to do with how the shot's going to go. It is actually the gauge of the needle or the diameter that's worse. So the bigger the diameter, the more painful it's going to be. So even if it's a very long needle, as long as the gauge is small, it's not going to hurt very much. There, there, young man. Oh. Medical science is nothing okay. to be afraid of. <laughs> Ooh, I think you're hitting the wall. Oh, what? Randomly... Uh. Yes, I can hear oh. the needle scraping against the bone inside. Randomly sticking inside his abdomen, that doesn't occur, okay? That, you're gonna put that in an IV. You're not gonna put that in an IM injection or intramuscular injection. You'll put it intravenously so it works. We do have sometimes where there's procedures where we stick needles into the tissue where, yes, you can actually feel the bone. It is a blind procedure, and we actually will stick the needle in knowing our landmarks, but you will occasionally hit the bone. When we do hit the bone, it actually doesn't hurt the patient, but you'll able to know, okay, I don't need to go in that spot. I need to adjust where I'm going. Same idea. Okay, Kenny, I'll bet you $100 you can't light oh, no. a fart on fire. <laughs> oh my gosh. Lighting farts on fire, probably not the best idea. I've never done this personally in my own life, but I've seen many clips online where you try to get in position, light it on fire. It's not a good idea. Pants go up in flames. You can singe any hairs that are in the area and people actually get lit on fire. Oh. <laughs> and he's on fire, obviously. Okay, gosh. Okay, do not try to beat somebody with a stick. Stop, drop, and roll is the appropriate way to put out a fire if your clothes are on fire. And he got put out by salt. And of course they killed Kenny at South Park. This hospital loves the sedative, which is actually appropriate in this setting. If somebody is totally burned, you always worry about not just the burns on the outside, but burns inside. So if you have soot in your nose or in your mouth, or you have singed hairs, a lot of times as an emergency room doctor, we're going to intubate you early, which is to put you on the ventilator, because if we wait too long, the amount of swelling can occur inside the soft tissue of your throat, and then we won't be able to get a tube in, and we need emergently to cut open your neck and put the tube in. So we don't want to get there. We've done it before, and it's not pretty sight. It is a last ditch effort. Try to untangle his trachea and esophagus. They're trying to untangle his trachea and esophagus. Sometimes if somebody is so burned, they wouldn't be twisted, but things can melt together. That's how horrible burns could be. We have precious little time left, people. We're gonna lose him soon. The emergency department is what I do for a living, right? And you got people freaking out everywhere. Those people, we put them in other rooms. We kick them out of the room. The emergency setting, we're professionals. We know what we're doing. We're calm and collected. Everybody has a role. The doctor is the conductor, say, of that room. And everybody has a specific role and job. And we work in unison. There's no chaos. There's no screaming. It's calm, quiet. And we do things very particular to help save someone's life and to give them best care possible. We need to zap this quick. <laughs> okay. He wanted to zap the heart that he ripped out in the microwave. No, you will liquefy that, but I like that there's a random potato just sitting in the emergency department. 
but somehow they he accidentally replaced your heart with a baby. <laughs> they actually used the potato to be a substitute for his heart. That is hilarious. Heart transplants are very cool, very intricate. Literally, you take the heart out of the chest. You have the blood supply being pumped through another machine, keeping the person alive while you're then putting the new heart back in to reconnect all the major vessels. Hat off to all the cardiothoracic surgeons that are have the skill to be able to do that. It doesn't happen in 20 seconds like this occurred. Hello, everyone. Hello, doctor. Oh, Thanks gosh. for seeing Eric on What I like that the chef is with the kids. We just want you to take a look and tell us if you see anything. Oh, gosh. There. Other than its monstrous size. Oh, gosh. Anytime a patient is on their belly, you know it has to do with the backside. Oh, oh my, my gosh. God. Oh, my gosh. Wait. Wait, there's a huge crack going <laughs> right down the middle. <laughs> Good first reaction. There's a huge crack going down, down the middle. Everybody has a crack in their butt that is normal very funny yeah like we have heard that <laughs> a zillion times All right, oh let's take a look. he's putting on the glove hey the doctor is doing a rectal exam but you put on a glove and you actually put lubrication on your finger and you tell the patient that you're sticking your finger in their rectum so that way they're not surprised you're not doing anything inappropriate and you definitely, as a physician, have a chaperone with you in the room to make sure that no funny business goes on. And you don't just jab inside somebody. It is very particular process. Patients can also clamp down on your fingers and not let your finger out. These are other problems I've heard that other doctors had to deal with. And other times, you're doing a rectal exam just to see if the patient has what's called rectal tone in case there was a spinal injury to make sure the spinal cord's not severed. So there are many different reasons why we actually do rectal exams, even just to check for blood, check the prostate, see if there's any masses. These are all things, and yes, every single person that goes to medical school gets trained how to do this properly on a live human being that volunteers for this. Afterwards, he'll probably have to burn his hand and bury it. <laughs> You're probably gonna have to burn his hand and bury it. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I wanna do that, but no, the show must go on. No swelling of the hormonal gland? Oh. <laughs> Wait, what's this? <laughs> Why does he have a saddle? You know that feeling when you take a huge dump? Okay, wait a minute. I don't know what the doctor was doing, but he was digging around. He was almost a forearm deep into his rectum. And then all of a sudden the satellite comes out. So satellite in a butt, it happens. But I'm gonna have a serious moment. There are so many objects that I've seen in my career that have been lost in the butt, in the rectum uh, that patients don't explain appropriately. I fell on this. Oh, I didn't know that was there. So please be safe. You can perforate your rectum and then there's a bigger surgical problem. A lot of these times when you lose an object up in your rectum because there's negative pressure, you actually might have to go to the operating room to have it removed. Food for thought. Oh, man. Well, I, did, I went right, right back into you him. You know that feeling when the huge dump you just took shoots back <laughs> up inside your ass? No, I'm not all right. I've never seen a hemorrhoid react this way. It's not a hemorrhoid, doc. That wasn't Oh my gosh. Hilarious. Okay, hemorrhoids. So internal versus external hemorrhoids. External hemorrhoids hurt like heck and they bleed a little bit. Internal hemorrhoids don't hurt at all and bleed a ton. They are not satellites that go in and out of the rectum. Other things do that. I advise to stay away from it. Nurse, please. I need another pair of hands in here. All right, the... Oh, sorry. oh, messed up. There are actually people who work in the healthcare field that may have lost a limb, have a prosthetic, and function just as perfectly as if they don't have any disability or even better than some people. This is making fun of it, but in real life, these people can thrive no problem in this industry. I have over 100 people to tend to here, and only myself and Nurse Goodley. All right, they need civilian help. Oh, anything about surgery. I used to watch Quincy. What? Why the hell didn't you say so? Put on some scrubs. <laughs> Boys, I'm making you all honorary doctors. You can help us save these people's hey, lives. Hey, they're doing honorary doctors. During the COVID-19 in New York, they were asking medical students that had not graduated from medical school to help in the hospitals. They were that desperate. So this isn't that abnormal. South Park called it out. But now they're all in the operating room. Hey, chef's got his hat on, but everybody's got their surgical mask on. So let's check it out. This man's appendix is burst. I have no choice but to operate now. With wow, okay, pump. cool. Need so appendix is burst. So appendix is about the size of your pinky that sits on the right lower quadrant of your abdomen, does not cause any issues 
for most people, can get inflamed and infected and needs to be surgically removed most of the time. New studies out there show that you can do some conservative therapy with antibiotics maybe, but if it bursts, it's an emergency situation because now there's fecal matter floating around inside your abdomen. You could become sick, get fevers, get something called sepsis and die if this is not taken care of immediately where the surgeon opens it up, closes the hole, washes out the abdomen and you're on antibiotics and hospitalized for a couple days to even weeks. You all to be strong for me. Nurse Goodley will take care of the anesthesia. Chef, you act as her arms. Boys, you have to help with suction all right. bandages. Ready? No. Okay. First, I'll make an incision on the chest. Okay, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is horrible. Okay, so suction. A surgery for the appendix is in the abdomen, not the chest. First mistake. First of all, we try to do laparoscopic surgeries with cameras not having to open. Sometimes you need to have an open surgery where you make a larger scar or an incision. It says here the operation begins with a one inch incision in the abdomen on the left side just above the. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. I love that we're reading an instruction manual here to do the incision, but then Cartman just goes mumbling on the instructions to make an incision. I think this is a bad idea, fellas. Oh my gosh. Liposuction is a process of siphoning out the excess. Oh gosh, a uh -huh, bad idea. Uh, oh, that is disgusting and funny. One kid shouldn't be playing with knives and have access to steak knives and cutting each other open. They need to be supervised. But beyond that, liposuction surgery, yes, you need to make a small incision to get the specific transducer in attached to a hose on suction that you actually kind of go through and break up the lobules of fat that it can like suction out. Fat actually looks yellow whitish, that globule, and you just have to be careful of removing too much tissue and you have to be careful of not injuring intra-abdominal organs. If you go too deep past the abdominal wall, you gotta be careful and you need to have a plastic surgeon do this procedure for you. Hilarious, I love South Park, funny. I've actually never seen any of the medical components on the shows that I've watched in the past and I'd advise that nobody agree to having Cartman do any procedure on their body. Do you have a favorite show that features medical situations that you want me to react to? Let me know which show or episode in the comments below. And if you want to see me react to video games, check me out on the Experts React series on Gameology. And as always, make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.